One of the most important steps for cleaning up resting state data is denoising. Of course, removing noise is necessary for any imaging analysis, but resting state data in particular is very susceptible to artifacts such as linear drifts and motion effects. To begin denoising the data, click the Done button from the Setup tab. A new menu will appear prompting you to select which resting state analyses you want to do. Any combination of ROI to ROI, C to voxel, and voxel to voxel. Don't worry now about what these mean. We'll cover them in a later video. All three are selected by default, and we'll leave them as they are for now. Click Start to begin the denoising step. After a few minutes, you will have access to the denoising tab. The window in the upper left corner shows the confound regressors that are used to account for different sources of noise, while the window on the right shows how much signal can be explained by each regressor. By default, CON will include regressors derived from the tissue types that you generated in the ROI section of the setup tab, and the first level covariates of the setup tab as well. Khan extracts five principal components from both the white matter and the CSF ROIs. These best represent the signal profile in those regions. If you click on the string, for example, white matter 5p, below you will see an illustration of each component's time series. In the confound dimensions panel, you can change the number of components. For example, try entering a value of 10 and see how the time series panel changes. Although including more components can filter out more of the signal from these regions, you quickly reach a point of diminishing returns. More regressors also means more degrees of freedom, which can reduce the statistical power of your model. For most experiments, the default of five components will be enough. Within this panel, you can also choose to add higher order derivatives. If this is done at all, it is usually done to the motion regressors specified here under realignment. For example, first and second order derivatives can capture more subtle movements that are not accounted for by the traditional translations and rotations. Polynomial expansion is a similar concept, adding either a quadratic or cubic exponent to the regressor, although this is not commonly done. For now, I'm going to reset these back to their defaults. The filter checkbox specifies whether the regressor should be bandpass filtered before it is entered into the model. You can do this for individual regressors by highlighting the confound regressor and checking the box, or by changing the after regression reg BP option to simultaneous. The reasons for choosing to do these are discussed more in the link to the book below. In the additional steps panel, you can also choose to add higher order detrending. For example, if you have a very long scan session and you think you may need to model more complex scan or drift. And despiking. Despiking will artificially lower the signal of voxels that are abnormally high, which are not accounted for by high motion. For most data, choosing to either despike or not despike will give similar results. However, for unusually noisy data, despiking can be useful for removing artificially high signal. The right side of the denoising area will automatically update a figure showing how the regressors load onto the resting state data. The distributions over here show the effect of your denoising regressors and parameters both before and after they are applied, with blue being before and yellow being after. In general, the raw resting state data is skewed to generate positive correlations, mostly as a result of confound regressors, such as motion. 
Note how the distribution of connectivity values is centered closer to zero after denoising is applied. The scatter plot below the distributions shows another view of the same principle. Data that is denoised shows a more uniform distribution in connectivity values as one tests for correlations at voxels farther away from the seed voxel. This figure here is something called a carpet plot which unravels each volume from a three-dimensional cube of voxels into a two-dimensional plot of squares. Each column represents an individual volume, and each row is an individual voxel in that volume. Denoising smooths out the rougher transitions between voxels that are probably caused by motion, scanner drift, and physiological noise and the time series plot of the global signal reflects this smoothing out as well. Lastly, the preview brain on the right-hand side shows the percent of variance in the bold signal explained by the currently highlighted confound regressor. The loading of the explained variance should correspond to the regressor that is highlighted. For example, without me showing you, can you guess what this confound regressor represents? Do you think it is movement? The white matter components or the cerebral spinal fluid components and why. For most data sets, these figures right here should look pretty similar. The distribution of connectivity values will be centered close to zero and the bold time series will be smoothed out. If the data passes those checks, you are ready to begin estimating a general linear model using those regressors. We will see how to do this in the next video.